All right, now from Tampa Bay, Florida. In fact, one of the members of TheologyOnline.com, my favorite website. Johnny, welcome to Bob and Yurt Live. Thanks, Bob. How are you today? Doing great. Thanks, sir. just wanted to call and comment on two of the things you said in your show. Mainly just one thing, because you've, you've had in your signature for quite some time one of my quotes. Is that correct? Yes, I quote you on Theology Online, where we were talking about evolution, and you said evolution is not about an increase in information. And I've wanted you to retract that when speaking generally about Darwinism and the evolution of the species from molecules to man, that evolution is about an increase in information. Well, see, you want me to retract that in a general sense, but if you read what I posted, I posted, I said, I'm not saying that there hasn't been a trend towards increasing complexity or increasing organization, both of which you might define as an increase in information. I'm talking about, in the sense of evolution as a theory, there is no direction when you say if something has evolved or has devolved. There's no such direction. If it loses information and that loss of information is increasing frequency into the population, then we say that you know, the population is still evolved. Okay, now you know, let me ask you this. Could you get from amoebas and protozoans mm -hmm. to man without right. a massive increase in information? Is that possible? Could you get there just by losing information? No, you could not. Okay, so is Darwinism, is the theory of evolution basically that species have evolved from single-celled organisms. Is that basically Darwinism? Darwinism is basically a posit to explain the distribution of species from a common ancestor. Right. So, yes, and so, so to come from single-celled organisms to modern species, including the whole animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and man. So mm -hmm. if you're to describe Darwinism to go from single-celled organisms to mankind, doesn't that overwhelmingly require an increase in information? Yes, and I've never contended otherwise. Johnny, in our discussion, I read what you wrote very carefully. Okay. And the reason I made such a big deal out of it is because this is what we creationists put up with all the time. When a Darwinist, an evolutionist, a scientist, a biologist will say evolution is not about an increase in information, okay. and that is okay. the fundamental... Is this right? Is this correct? The fundamental issue regarding Darwinism from amoebas to man is an increase in information. That's the fundamental issue. True that or is false? The overall trend. True or the false? Overall pattern. So is it true? Can you give me a true or false? Maybe I could remove that from my signature. Is this a true statement that evolution, Darwinism from single cell organism to man, is overwhelmingly about an increase in information, yes well, or no? I've already told you that, yes, twice. Okay, uh, good. All right, we uh, have it however, clear. However, however, when do we say population is evolving? Okay, what, what Johnny, I, I know you want to point out that also there's a loss of information, and there are mutations that cause degradation. Now, let right. me ask you this. Do creationists agree... Uh, can you answer my question before go I answer Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. When do we say a population has evolved? You might say when it gets worse, when it breaks down, that's evolution. That's no, not okay, how it's no, popularly who is, who is used. You? Who is you? You. I'm talking about you and somebody debating a creationist. Whereas about, generally, how about a biology book? What in, would a in, biology book say defining as an evolving population? The reason would they would say that? Here's the reason, Johnny, that you and others would say that. Because you could point to many examples of degradation of the gene pool, of mutations causing diseases, but you right. can't point to many examples of improvements in added information in the genome. So therefore, you have to argue, here is proof of evolution. Sickle cell anemia is proof of evolution, and we say, that's a breakdown, that's degenerative, that's a mutation that brings about disease, and you say, yeah, that's a perfect example of evolution. Let me ask you this. Do no, wait, creationists wait, wait. agree that there are breakdowns in the genome? Do creationists agree with that? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I hear it all the time. Yeah. So for you guys to trumpet that evolution includes a breakdown in the DNA, so what? We all agree that there's disease and that things break down. What you guys have to prove is that there is an increase in information over the millennia in the millions of years okay so that's okay. your challenge to prove that 
And we assert that you can't because it hasn't happened and mutations are overwhelmingly destructive. Hey, Johnny, wouldn't it be a bad leg long before it's a good wing? Before we get to that, I'll answer yeah. that question. All right. Before we get that, if you were to open a biology book, okay, and it were to define evolution as a process on a po- acting on a population, yeah. how would it define that? What would it say in there? It might say that any change, any genetic change is evolution, okay, and, okay, and that stop. wouldn't be helpful uh, because both no, sides stop, of the stop. debate... Then uh, by definition, I am correct. By definition. Is that correct? If they define it that way, it's because so they know, Johnny, they have a bias. And because of their bias... You're the one they, who wrote the theory. Why would there be a bias? The bias is because they can't find evidence of an increase in information, so they want to say that evolution includes disease and breakdown and mutations. And we, the creationist side, agree with that, so that's not a very helpful way of looking at evolution. You have the challenge to prove that there's an increase in information, and the fact that you guys always run to disease and breakdowns is proof that you don't have a lot of evidence to show that the genome gets more complex by natural law and survival of the fittest. Can you give an example of a genetic mutation or, or, or an evolutionary process which ha- can be seen to increase the information in the genome? 